Andrew, always appreciate the time. You know I like to give you a blank canvas. What is this lawsuit from Colin Kaepernick and his attorney all about? Yeah, good morning, my friend Ross. Good to be with you as always. The thing about Colin Kaepernick's suit that's so different than all these other suits, Ezekiel Elliott, Tom Brady, is that it's brought by Kaepernick's attorneys and the NFLPA, who you reference, is always fighting the NFL, seems to be a bystander. And they tweeted out something yesterday that they learned about this suit, collusion case, the same time we did in the media. So my first reaction is there's a backstory here that tells me maybe things aren't copacetic between Colin Kaepernick and his union. And for some reason, this is a case being brought by an individual attorney, well-known attorney, Mark Garagos, who's represented Michael Jackson, among others, instead of being brought by the union. As to the case itself, you know my feelings here, really uphill climb. The only way you bring a collusion suit with any success is you have some smoking guns, or at least one smoking gun, which is a text an email, a record of some communication between two or more teams saying, let's not sign this guy. And that is what collusion is. Collusion is not teams saying we'd rather have Brandon Whedon, teams saying we'd rather have Ryan Fitzpatrick. Pick a name. Teams are all going to, if they uh, if they're ever get on a stand or something, they'd say, yeah, we like the guys we have. We like this guy. We like that guy. Didn't fit the system. All the football reasons we've heard for eight months. But if there's a smoking gun, that's a different case. The last thing I'll say is reading the press release about the lawsuit, it just seems like there's pre- that President Trump is involved. That they're, they're sort of making it as the president coercing owners into not signing him. And I'm not sure that's even a case. I mean, what we have to see is this owner and that owner, this GM and that GM, coordinated effort to keep him out of the league, like I said, a real uphill climb, Ross. Yeah, I mean, and if that were the case with Trump, then what, was he really that involved going back to like March and April and, and all? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. What do you make of him yeah. and the NFLPA not – not being in sync on this. You know, it's interesting, Ross, we've talked on your podcast about, you know, the the NFLPA has made a couple statements about Kaepernick, but it's been, like you said, eight months, nine months. It hasn't been a lot. It hasn't been a lot. And maybe that's something behind this, that it's just interesting to me that a collusion case is a big deal. And the NFLPA has brought collusion cases unsuccessfully, but about, you know, lack of free agency back a few years ago. You know, they are the people to bring collusion cases, but not here. So almost as a preemptive move, they put out a statement saying, we'll support them, but we didn't bring this. Uh, And then, you know, the nuclear option, Ross, some people have talked about there's a way you can blow up the whole CBA if you find collusion. Well, one of the requirements for that is that the NFLPA has to bring the case, and they're not bringing the case. So we can forget about that. So, okay, so there's a couple more questions I've got for you. We're talking with Andrew Brandt. Yeah. He is uh, a lawyer. He's the former Packers executive. Who does the the, the case go to, Andrew? And in your mind, you've been in the owners' meetings because the Packers don't have an owner. So you were at the owners' meetings for the Packers. Do you think there's any chance that this actually happened? I don't. I mean, certainly there have may have been internal conversations about Colin Kaepernick that involve more than football. I think that's pretty likely. But I don't think coordinated action about this would have happened. I just think that's too out there. And I will say this, that, you know, when, when people talk about Colin Kaepernick, it's another level, right? People are, it's, uh, to say it's just about football is really naive. And I think that has grown. The longer he's been out, that has grown. I've said this for months. He becomes much less of a story if someone signs him. It's a two-day story. He's a backup. Now he's a big story because he, A, hasn't talked, and B, hasn't signed. And I think there's this sort of mythical figure about him, which is going to 
permeate into these meetings we'll talk about in a second. In terms of who hears it, Ross, system arbitrator, that's the system be- between the NFL and NFLPA. It's about the collective bargaining agreement. His name is Stephen Burbank. He's a law professor at University of Pennsylvania. He heard the previous collusion case. He heard the cat penalties cases about the Redskins and Cowboys. He'll hear this case if it gets that far. So is his career over now, basically? I mean, once you file a a collusion grievance against the NFL, is there any chance a team would actually sign him? That's going to be a a hard thing to do. You know, obviously people would, would connect the dots here. If a team signs him, he drops the case. Uh, you know, we would sort of think that would happen if we get there. But it doesn't help. You know, he's now set in motion another antagonistic move, and that's not good. I know a lot of people are asking me about my former team and the sad news about Aaron, whether they'll approach Colin Kaepernick. I think whether it's Colin Kaepernick, Tony Romo, or any of the veterans, just speaking about the Packers, we know the Packers. I know them so well. They draft and develop. They move from within, next man up. That next man is Brett Hundley. I think he'll be better than he was. They bring up Callahan from the practice squad. They're good to go. So this idea that you have to jump in for a veteran, whether it's Kaepernick or anyone else, I don't think that's happening in Green Bay. You can hear him every week on the Business of Sports podcast. He joins me as well on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast on Wednesdays. His name is Andrew Brandt. The last question, Andrew, these owners' meetings and yeah. these discussions they're supposedly having about anthem protests and putting a rule out, what's going to happen? What do you anticipate there? I think it's a big-time meeting. I, I think it's something that ultimately, like everything, Ross, comes down to a negotiation. And the NFL owners want to move on. They want to stick to sports, especially on game day. They don't want this permeating their business. And maybe they're hearing from fans and sponsors and networks the same thing. Players, at least a segment of them, don't want to move on. So how do they co-opt? How do they become a negotiation? There's talk about the owners letting them use websites, owners having a boot camp about social issues, owners getting involved in lobbying for criminal legislation about racial relations. Will that satisfy players? It just seems like we're in the midst of a negotiation, defining moment for the commissioner, for the union, they, you know, D. Smith and Roger Goodell are both extended or at least pending extensions. Here's an opportunity to show some ability to harmonize for once over an issue that seems to be polarizing. I'm looking for some kind of bilateral solution, player leadership, whether it's Michael Jenkins, Mal- uh, I'm sorry, Malcolm Jenkins, Michael Bennett, whoever is satisfied, and then the players stand for the anthem. Interesting time. It really is. Andrew, always interesting when you join me, no matter what platform it might be on. Thank you so much for the time. Always a pleasure, Ross. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.